Hello, my name is Stephen Smith. I am a Quicken expert as well as an advanced QuickBooks Pro Advisor. I am the owner and founder of Sundial Virtual Family Office and Controllership Solutions. You can find me at quickencoach.com and sundialvfo.com. In this video, we're going to talk about Quicken customization or customizing Quicken. Specifically, we're going to talk about menus, registers, toolbars, accounts, and tabs. The purpose of the video is to demystify a lot of the options that you see in Quicken. Specifically, we're going to go down the view menu bar. There's a lot of choices in here and it can be a little bit overwhelming. We're going to go over what each one does. Basically, once these things are reviewed and checked out, it can be a set it and forget it type thing. So starting at the top of the view menu bar is your first choice between standard menus and classic menus. Classic menus are, there's more of them. And this includes a little bit of redundancy into of the tabs, which we'll also talk about customizing a little bit later in the video. The standard menu is shorter, and for a cleaner look, it is recommended. The next option is font size. People with smaller monitors, laptops, or need a little bit of help uh, with their eyesight, might opt to use a larger font size. However, just a few words of caution. I have noticed what I call unintended consequences when using the larger font size. It tends to cut things off in registers and you will end up having to scroll and manipulate the file and manipulate the width of columns more frequently. If you have a larger monitor, as, as I do, I prefer to keep it on normal font size. The next option you'll see is use pop-up register. What is a register? The registers are when you go into your bank or investment or brokerage accounts. That is where all of the transactional data is recorded in a register format. If you go into the register, uh, it will fill the entire viewable screen unless you have the pop-up register. The good thing about a pop-up register is that it allows you to open up multiple screens. And if you are working in a two-screen or multi-screen environment, uh, this can be beneficial to drag from one screen and back to another back to the other screen if you're comparing different registers. Also, another unintended consequence is you do find yourself having to manipulate and play with uh, the margins and the column size in order to resize appropriately on your screen. Again, my personal preference is to not utilize pop-up registers. The next option is the toolbar. So what is the toolbar? The toolbar is a series of icons that can be used that can be used to shortcut to different parts of the program. All of these are usually available from the menu bars or from the options in the program. But if you're quickly going to something such as writing a check or a certain report or the one step update, then it's nice to have the toolbar. You can customize the toolbar by hitting Customize Toolbar from the men View menu or right-clicking and hitting Customize Toolbar. This allows you to add different shortcuts. And you can get a long list by starting to show all tool toolbar choices. And you can also either show icons only for a clean look or if you don't remember what these icons stand for, you can add the text, which will tell you what they are for. One of my favorite parts about using the toolbar 
is that I can add or remove memorized reports. So if you've memorized a report and you frequently go into that report, I like to add memorized reports to this toolbar rather than going into reports, memorize reports, and then opening up the report that I had memorized. Just a nice shortcut. The next option is the account bar. The account bar is essentially your balance sheet. It's where all of your accounts are listed, bank accounts, credit card accounts, investment, brokerage, properties. And you have about two or three different options here. One is to leave it docked or as a permanent fixture on the, on the screen, on the user interface. And you have two choices. Do you want it on the left side or do you want it on the right side? I am a left-hand user myself, but if you didn't want to have it docked, you can also undock it. This gives you more space to view your registers. And when you want to, you just hit the down, bar, down arrow, select the register that you need to be in, and then when you go into the register or just shrink it back up, it will go away. The other option, once if you do have it docked, is in the gear where you can go to a standard view, which is a little bit more compressed, or a compact view, sorry, a compact view, which is more compressed or a standard view, which is a little bit roomier. You can also show the amounts or hide the amounts. If you want to show the amounts, this brings up a dollar amount of each of the accounts that you're worth. Or you can hide them. And you can also choose whether or not you want to see cents or not cents. It just depends on what kind of look you're going for and what size screen or monitor you are, are using. I myself leave it docked on the left with dollars and cents. The next options are shortcuts to Quicken Setup and the to-do bar. Uh, the setup is not something that I usually, you, you, would you, one would use frequently. It is a reminder to add accounts. There are shortcuts on categorization, bills, budgets, planning for taxes, tracking investments. Frankly, each of these options are also available from the tabs. So if you're in these tabs, see, here is the create budget, get started. So I generally don't feel as though the show quick and setup is worth the real estate on the screen and thus I leave it turned off. The to-do bar, if you are very set to reminders, if you're using reminders or automated transactions, if you are using Quicken to pay bills, this is a nice feature. I myself am happy with the flags, which tell me if I have tasks to perform in each of the individual categories or accounts. But this is another option. Again, I tend to leave it off. The final option is tabs. Tabs are different modules that Quicken has added over the years, such as business, rental property, planning, property and debt. If you're looking for a clean look and you don't, or you don't utilize any of these modules, you can turn them off uh, slightly cleaner. You can customize this by selecting different colors. You can go to green or blue or purple. Um, and you also can select the background color. Do you want gray or white? So just another further option to customize the look and feel of your Quicken file. If you have multiple Quicken files, I recommend changing the color of each one so that you are visually recognized as to which file that you are in. 
The final option is the full screen mode, which is a has a shortcut of F11. So let's say you are in a register and you need a little bit more real estate on the screen, especially if you have a smaller monitor. F11 is the equivalent of getting rid of the account bar, getting rid of the toolbar, getting rid of the menu bars, and opening up as wide as you possibly can. F11, again, reduces that back down. I hope this helped you customize Quicken and demystify some of the options that you have in the view menu bar. I can be found at Sundial VFO and QuickenCoach.com. Thank you.